This is FNGR, and this is going to be the fourth installment of the Analysis Rift. I'm going to do these in reverse order today, just because I think it'll be easier that way for me. Heart Song? I remember her coming back, and there was a, a big commotion, and there was a, I don't know, like, a, a real life got in her way of uh, creating content, and I remember her being connected to a, a lot of people, and having a a huge, you know, a welling of support. Her room, here I'm going to look this up, had like a who's who. I actually managed to get involved in this. Uh, she managed to get Anthony C., Dr. Dr. Wolf, Eliora, Golden Fox. I love Kim Possible a lot. Looney, Mage, Cloud Cuckoo Country, Puzzle Piece, Quick Script, Red Cord, Robin, Sweetie Blue, Manuva, Toon Critic, A Male Alicorn, Myself, and Pokey. And I never found out what happened with this. It was Heart Songs, Nightmare, REM, and Dream Cycle. I don't know if anybody found out what happened with this. I, I was part of it, and then I never heard anything. So if anyone has any uh, tips on what happened, I'm all ears. But I don't have anything really negative about Heart Song. I, I think I um I think I was in trouble and I disenfranchised a lot of people and I got to be a part of this, so I guess I really appreciate it. No, I don't guess I know I appreciate it. So uh Heart Song, if you hear this, I'd like to thank you. Next up is uh Grey Cat, aka Silvermane. It's my favorite artist who I would really appreciate it if he would get my banner done. <laughs> you seem like you, you wanna try and have me commission more work. But I really want to get that one done before I put in a second order. I don't know. I'm I'm nutty like that. It's not that you aren't reliable, and I understand that real life happens. I find your work to be immaculate. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about it, but I think it really speaks for itself. I, you certainly draw better than I talk, so I'm really just wasting my time trying to sit there and say you do you do a great job. I ask a same brony, aka Graham. To my experience, when I've worked with you in the past, you do a really good job. I'm glad I had you on for A&Y. You're coming on for uh, Vector Brony, and I'm sure you'll give a good showing of yourself. I don't know what other positive things to say that I think that people are probably missing out on not including you in more. I think there's something missing from your videos. I don't know, maybe it's just... Like, it's, it's like a live... The, the whole live vlog thing in front of the camera. There needs to be some kind of catch... Something that rat reaches out and grabs your audience more. I don't know what it'll be. Maybe you should do, like, segments. You know, some variety. Geeky Steven Logan. I've seen you a couple times in chat. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know. You, you rub me the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, I don't hate you. I'm not out to get you. There's, there's something about you specifically. Like, when we're in chat. I don't know. Maybe it's the snarky side. Who knows? I'm I'm just stupid. Ignore me. Finn Pony. Finn's a cool guy. I'm another person who works for uh or did work for Doctor Wolf. He's he's gotten involved in the some of the rooms that most people would otherwise normally avoid. I know you're very busy and you've been very open minded. I'd like to thank you for that. Any from the best I could tell, I don't have any negative feedback to the guy. He can take a, a some lumps and he's very productive. Yada yada. Emerald Comet. I had a, a really good feeling about Emerald at first, but then I noticed that uh, for uh, the season premiere, you did the you switched over to podcast. And again, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with uh, podcasting. I do it myself, but I've always been more pa uh, passionate about seeing people do analysis. So if there's any kind of inspiration that I could do to lure you back to your old format, I'd prefer it that way. But Hey, I'm, I'm sure whatever path you take, I think you're talented enough to be successful in it. And we get to Dr. Wolf. <laughs> I've been thinking about this one since I started. I'm going to probably splice in a clip here where Digi comments on uh, you probably putting up a disclaimer that you're not a doctor because that's something that probably, or I, not probably, I know has confused fans in the past. I occasionally watch Dr. Wolf, even though I hate his content. You have a very weird watch cycle, Pasta. We've talked about this. I know, I do. This. I do. <laughs> we need to get you some real I, uh, fun things that you'll enjoy. It's okay. I, no, no. Gonna, did you did? Did, did you already got me covered? Okay. Oh, like, you're not a real wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a real fucking psychologist either, by the way. Yeah. You're not Funny. a real doctor. I'd like to see that disclaimer on there. This is yeah. um, medical I actually, entertainment. Um, I actually... 
I will. I am Dr. Like, Google. honestly, really Google. want that disclaimer on his videos. I am not a fucking psychologist. Yes. I am a fucking accountant. I play. Please I play a medical. On your video. I play a medical doctor on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> you, you, by the way, warning: don't give a critique of any Dr. Wolf video in his comment section. You will get hate. Yeah. Well, kind, I can't that, even. Like, I don't. I, I haven't even seen Doctor Wolf fans. Well, but well I don't some of us. Of yeah, some of us don't worry about that hate pasta. Some of us revel in it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's better to suffer in hate than revel in it. Doctor Wolf uh, is like WebMD without the MD. <laughs> I will not be skipping over the artist segment. I'm less than enthralled with how your relations with your artists go, sir. Or I've been requested to on behalf of. Peter Aeon of Dreams, a.k.a. the Oniromancer, who one of his near and dear friends, Grasshope, had to give up a significant amount of her time without compensation to work for you for a very extended, difficult, and painful time. That's not the only case. There's Gibbon Take, who's worked with you on three occasions and has explained that the moment he's asked to be compensated, you've cut off any and all interest in working with him in the future. The one record I've found of any of your people willing to come forward and saying that they were paid anything at all is Cotton Candy, who said, I think I was the only one so far, and that you crossed the line, and Cotton Candy would not be working for you in the future. I don't know. I, I've been able to forge my path. I don't know. I, I don't have the right words to politely express my discontent and make it sound politically not even sound like there's there's a wonderful message i'd like to get across here but one i know you're not going to listen as your voice grows i think you're going to drown out a lot of people that otherwise should be given a platform i didn't see it at first when you had like 10k subs but slowly but surely you've grown and you've grown because of the people that you've given the chance to grow and I know that sounds, I don't know, that sounds like the right thing to do, right? You you help other people out, they help you out. That's very, it's very in the spirit of the show. But the lens you hold it through is very stifling. It's very sanitized. And on top of that, I don't think I know really anyone that has a feel for you. There's, like, no other polite way of saying that there's nothing there. There's nothing of substance like... What are you about other than restraint? What do you, like, what do you stand for? Like, what are your passions? I, I, I feel like when I watch you, you're a censor bar. <laughs> and you convey that to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I feel comfortable with what I just did there. Last on the list is Corpulent. And I feel like I should save this one for its own damn video. <laughs> I, I mulled over whether I wanted to comment on your content but i really liked your uh season five what's it called your your season five premiere i would focus more on your analysis now that we're on the on season and cut back on some of the gimmicky kind of videos your analysis is strong enough where i think your viewers will be happy i understand what it's like to remain uh busy and keep your subs active but mm, I'd, I'd focus on your bread and butter your analysis right now. Maybe one or two joke videos a week. I think three to four updates limit yourself. Not go completely hog wild. I'm not going to air dirty laundry right here just because I'm bushed. <laughs> I'm bushed and no one would know what I was talking about. Thank you.